Hey everybody, this is Miss Barbara. Um, I'm happy to be able to share today's lesson with you. I do wonder how everybody's doing. Um, I think probably, well, I'm pretty sure <laughs> since last time I got to speak um, with you, you've started back to school and some of you maybe have started in actually at school in the classroom and some, some of you are still um, learning virtually. So whichever way you're learning right now, I hope that you're having a good experience. I hope that the start of the school year is going well and I hope that you know that uh, we are thinking of you and sending you love. So, um, okay, let's just take a, a quick moment here to prepare ourselves for the story. We have an important story today and it's a little bit long, um, but it's, it's very good and I hope you enjoy it. So um, let's get ourselves ready. So just sitting up tall, closing our eyes and taking a couple of deep breaths. calming our bodies and getting ourselves ready to listen and learn. I'm imagining that we are in the classroom right now, circled together on the rug. Ready to learn together. So we are going to learn about Jesus today read about Jesus. The title of the story is called A Man Called Jesus. One day over 2,000 years ago, 2,000 years ago, <laughs> a very special baby boy named Jesus was born in the northern part of Israel in the area of the Galilean Sea, which was controlled by the powerful Roman Empire. As a Galilean Jew, Jesus was a minority and he would have suffered the worst kind of treatment by the people in power. The Jewish religious leaders of his time were trying to serve two masters, the Roman leaders and the Jewish law. They provided little help in the struggle of the Jewish people to survive. From the beginning, Jesus seemed different. He seemed to have wisdom that was far beyond his years. Many were attracted to him and wanted to spend time around him. Others were bothered by him and tried to ignore him. He was a religious young man and spent time praying and meditating. He would go out into the wilderness and spend time alone in silence. One day he experienced something very special that changed his life and the way he saw the world. In his silence and deep thought, he came to the understanding that God is within all creation. That part of the story made me think of um, the box of items in our room, if you remember that, and our, how we began a lot of our classes talking about God being present in each of those items in the box, the acorn, um, the candle, the seed, the rock, the piece of wood. <laughs> the feather. Um, so I like that part. God is within all creation. Over the years, he would try to tell his friends and others about this awareness of God within each of us. He tried to explain it to others, and he began to talk about life and things differently. He seemed truly happy, even merry at times in spite of the difficult life he lived. People were drawn to him for reasons that they did not understand. Some realized that he seemed filled with sincere love and compassion for others. His friends realized that he seemed different and they asked him why. Jesus tried to explain how his understanding of God had changed during his time of deep thought and silence. He said that he now felt or experienced God in different terms. He said it was like experiencing the realm of God, sacred unity, or true happiness. 
but this only confused his friends. They asked him, realm of God? Where is that? Is it in the temple? Is it in our houses? No, he would answer. It is everywhere. It is above you. It is behind you. It is within you. But how can that be? His friends would ask. Can I see it or feel it or measure it? Jesus would look at them with love in his eyes and try to explain to them, saying, you will not understand it until you find it. But when you do find it, you will want to celebrate. Most of the time, the curious people would wander off, <laughs> confused and frustrated. But now and then, one or two would stay and ask Jesus more questions about how to experience this mysterious realm of God. Slowly, a small group formed that wanted him to teach them how to find this realm and how to experience true happiness. They were called his disciples. And so he began to teach them the way to experience the realm of God. First, he said, you must trust in God, the spirit within, and learn that we are all one. What else, he was asked. You must learn to be still. Our scriptures tell us we must be still to know and experience God. And then what must we do? He, they asked. You must repent, he said. This means that if you have caused harm to yourself or others, you must accept responsibility for your actions and change your behavior. And if you want to cleanse your heart and free your head, you must forgive not once, not twice, but 70 times seven. That's a lot of times. And if you want to experience true happiness, you must forgive all who have hurt you. And when you have forgiven all who have hurt you, then you are free of the poison in your heart and can no longer judge another. And when you no longer judge others, you will be free to offer love and compassion. And when you offer such love without judgment or conditions, you will find the doorway into true happiness. But to open that door, you must also be generous with your heart and your possessions do not worry about what you have or what you will wear, but be conscious about what you can give. And then he looked at each one of them slowly with an unusual serious look. And he said, when you have learned these practices, you will be ready for the last two. They will be the most challenging. And when they all got quiet, he said, when you are presented with the opportunity to help another who is in danger or who is suffering, do not pass by that opportunity, even when it may risk, may be a risk to your life or your livelihood. When you help others who are suffering with, when you help others who are suffering with love and without judgment, even if it is dangerous for you, you will experience a oneness and a sense of connectedness to God you have never experienced before. His new disciples shuddered with fear for they had no idea what the final lesson would be. And then Jesus smiled and said, and finally, I beg you, do not take yourself so seriously. Learn how to celebrate and laugh. Celebration and laughter are God's gifts of life. It will come naturally when you have discovered the realm of true happiness and your laughter will come from the deepest place in your belly and will tickle your heart. From a few years of having the opportunity to teach at 
community. Um, I think a lot of you already have this one. <laughs> you are um, great at celebration and laughter, and I encourage you to bring more of it into your life. You guys know how to do that. Now, as time went by, some of his new disciples began to practice this path, and they began to understand and experience what he had told them. His followers began to feel more fulfilled and free from fear and appeared to be truly happy. Others noticed and wanted to have the same experience. And so Jesus, the teacher, continued to teach. But many people were suspicious and could not understand his teachings. They didn't like the way Jesus wanted them to change the way they had always thought and the way things had always been. They were scared. But some did understand and experienced wonderful changes in their lives. These students realized that this rabbi, the word for teacher, was very special. And they began to tell others about him. And because there was so much suffering in the lives of the Jewish people, his followers began to think that maybe he was the one who, who was going to lead them out of their unjust lives. They began to believe that he would be their hero, the one that could save them from all of their troubles, the one the scriptures talked about, a new Messiah, or Savior, one they had been awaiting for over 500 years. They believed that this new Messiah would bring about a new kingdom where everyone was free. Well, as you may know from other stories like this one, when leaders in charge of a land rule unfairly and the people start talking about being free and everyone being equal, those leaders often get very scared of losing their power. The ruling leaders of Jesus' time began to fear that Jesus would start an uprising and that Jewish people would start asking for more rights and more land and more money. The leaders did not want things to change. They liked the power they had over the land and the people. So one day the Roman leaders came to Jesus and questioned him, saying that he was breaking the laws of the Roman Empire. Jesus' friends and followers begged him to fight back, to start a war, to save himself. But Jesus did not believe in fighting or war, and he did not feel that spreading the word of God was against the law. He only wanted to see his people happy and free. He wanted to see his land rule justly and fairly. He wanted everyone to see that we are all equal, that we are all one. He refused to fight back, and he denied nothing to the Roman leaders. Yes, he had been teaching a new way of being. No, he was not wrong in doing so. And so, out of fear and hate, he was killed by the rulers. He was hung on a cross and left to die, as all other lawbreakers of his time were. But they could not kill his spirit. They could not kill the love that his followers had for him and the teachings that he shared. We continue to learn about the life of Jesus because he was someone who was not afraid to stand up for what he believed in and because he had a message that we can still learn from. We carry the teachings of Jesus and the understanding that comes from following his example into our daily lives. When we look at the story of Jesus, we understand that part of it may be true and part of it may be myth. But we know, what we know is real is that these teachings have changed many people's lives for the better. So that is our story today. It was a little bit longer than usual, but it was important. And I hope that you enjoyed it. Um, something that I feel like I could read through a bunch of times and learn something new each time. For now, I'll just leave you with um, a challenge to uh, cultivate as much 
joy and celebration and laughter in your day-to-day -day life as you can. Um, okay, so let's finish with our prayer for protection. The light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. And the presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is. And all is well. We love you. We bless you. We appreciate you. And we behold the Christ in you. See you soon. Bye-bye.